Welcome to this week's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. On today's episode, I have a very special guest with me. He goes by the name of Bishop Wesley Knight, and he'll be giving you all the details of his church, his past, and a whole lot more. So sit down, relax, and keep it with us, because you are watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as I promised, I have a very special guest with me, as we do each and every week right here on Beyond Focus TV. Bishop, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. Well, it's such a pleasure to have someone of your caliber read your bio. Truly, I'm impressed with everything from where you've come from to where you are now. So first thing I want to get into, really, is your church. NCCC, not CCC, but NCCC. So why don't you give us some details on that? Well, uh, New Creation Christian Church is uh, what NCCC stands for. Um, we have, uh, we've been in uh, existence for 13 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, we started 13 years in the basement of my home. Uh, the Lord, six months, the Lord spoke to us and told us that Three to uh, six months, we'll be moving out of the basement into a location. We moved to our first location, which set about 70. And uh, we were there for 10 years, and we transitioned again. And now we're in our new location, which sits about 250 now. And that current location is where? 1534 Broadway, the corner of Hancock Street in Brooklyn. Well, that's great. So tell us about that moment where you decided to even form your own church. You're always a part of somebody else's church, and that growth developed. When did that moment come where you said, you know what, I'm going to take that step? Well, what happened actually was I set up under my pastor for 10 years. And upon his transitioning into, uh, you know, from earth to heaven, you know, he, uh, he passed and went on to be with the Lord. Uh, the reins was handed over to me and my wife. But long before that, New Creation had been a, a vision that the Lord had given me. Actually, it was my personal ministry. And uh, a year after that, we appointed the pastor of that local ministry, uh, just knowing that I had to be free to obey the voice of the Lord pertaining to ministry. We were there a year, and then we uh, left there and started New Creation Christian Church in the basement of our home, as I previously, previously stated. That is amazing. So yeah. what are some of the challenges having your church in your home? You know, you're, that means you're welcoming people. And when you have a church, you know, anybody is basically welcome to come. How were you able to separate home life and your other home life? Well, what was uh, actually amazing about it was we had a studio basement apartment. That's where the church was held. And so you couldn't actually go from upstairs to downstairs without going downstairs. But, of course, when the saints did attend service, you know, our door was accessible to them. Uh, but I, I think we made the guidelines and had them to understand that we have a private life mm -hmm. and we wanted them to respect that you know so. well that's great and you came from a very tumultuous past yes. before finding the lord and that's something i actually really want to focus on because that could help a lot of our viewers somebody watching maybe going through something similar like that you weren't always a man of the lord so no. bring us to how that all came about well, I was raised in a Christian home. My mother was a preacher for many years. And uh, uh, it was at the age of 16. Uh, of course, you know, we are being made to go to church. And it was that embarrassing moment on Friday when the door would swing open and you're playing with your friends. And uh, my mother would yell, it's time for church. And so all activity ceased. We went to church. And at the age of 16, you know, I decided I, I didn't want to go as much mm -hmm. as we were, we were asked to go or made to go. 
And uh, I began to uh, get involved in other things that I shouldn't have been involved with, uh, exposed to things I shouldn't have been exposed to. And uh, one thing just led to another. Yeah. And being raised in Brooklyn, I'm sure, even New York as a whole, was a, it was a different time. Things were different. You were exposed to different things. And being forced into the church, sometimes parents try to go along those lines. What would you say to parents who are trying to maintain that Christianity and keep your children on the right path? Well, the one thing that I basically would say to them is, you know, I think early on in, uh, and, and, you know, my mother did the best she did, she could, for us introducing us to Christ and to God. But there wasn't the personal. There wasn't, I didn't see the reason why I needed to go to church. I didn't see the reason why I needed God in my life. Um, and I think that's very important now. It's very important for parents who have children to get them to understand that without God, there's no possible way that you're going to survive. And get them to have a personal relationship on their own with Christ. Instead of more of, you go to church on a Sunday because. Right. And I grew up in a Western New York home, so you're told, <laughs> because I, I'm your father or I'm your mother, and that's what it is. And right. I think children need to have the understanding exactly. yes. as to why. Well, that's great. Well, you know what? We'll keep it right here because you are watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Lydia Patel. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Bishop Wesley Knight is here tonight. He's my very special guest. Now, Bishop Knight, I want to talk about your mission with God. And that's so important because from 1993 to now, steadily, you've engaged in many, many different things. But let's talk about the mission among one of them. Uh, well, the mission of our ministry itself, uh, well, let me start by saying uh, I believe that we shouldn't force advertise. If the name of the church is on the outside, then we should be able to produce that with on the inside. Very true. And uh, the name of our ministry is New Creation, and our mission statement is, it is our goal to reach those men and women, boys and girls who have been broken through life's unfortunate circumstances, and through the love and word of Christ, we will nurture them into a new creation. And that's amazing. And I, I've read a lot about your church. I've done quite a bit of research on it. How would you describe the attendance and those who come out? We have a wonderful attendance. We have a wonderful attendance. We have our, uh, if I may say, the nucleus of support. But we have wonderful attendance. We have our Tuesday night attendance. We have our Thursday night attendance. And then our Sunday morning attendance. But we have... Uh, a great supporter. The saints are excited about being a part of the ministry, and uh, that's a great thing. So what separates the NCC from any of the other churches that they have in Brooklyn? I know it says New Creation. What really, for those watching who may never have attended, what incentive do they have to come out and attend? Well, one of the hallmarks of our ministry, uh, even from my bishop, that we were taught early on in ministry, that love has to be the key element. You know, we want people to come to church and receive the Holy Ghost. Well, there's people in church, uh, been in church all their life and still can't describe what the Holy Ghost is. But you know what love feel like. And you know what you, you know when I'm getting at the church, what I'm not getting at home. What I'm receiving at the church house, what I'm not receiving at my house. And we always told the saints, we want people to feel love when they come here because love or hold them until the Holy Ghost get them. So. That is great. And so many churches like to have outings, different festivities. 
what are some of the activities that your church does together as a group? Well, we, um, we have uh, several ministries within the ministry. We have uh, the New Creation Outreach Center, which we, uh, we have a, a food bank. We feed about 180 families every Saturday. Wow. Yes. Uh, we have a high school diploma program. We have engaged in the past uh, in a Leap for Faith basketball tournament, which we partnered with the FCA, and we were able to send two of our inner city kids uh, of the tournament away to college for two weeks so they can get a different experience besides Brooklyn. And uh, we are, you know, we just engage in so many things in the community. And uh, there's things on our table we're looking to do as well. But I wanted to ex elaborate a little more on several of those things. So the food, the food bank program, yes. 180 families, where do these resources come from? Well, we are actually partnered with the New York Food Bank. We are part of the New York Food Bank. Uh, in the area we in, we have a, a high percentage of poverty. We're in Bed-Stuy, Borderline, Bushwick. And uh, I think one of the things that's important for ministry to know, you know, the Bible says that before uh, Mo uh, Moses and them go to possess the promise, he sends out spies to see what's in the land. We need to know what the community needs so we can cater to the needs of that community. And how is that accomplished? I know you will probably send people out there. Have you seen the needs of Bed-Stuy, Bushwick, Brooklyn on a whole? Have you seen those needs change over time? Uh, yes, they ha have changed. I, I give credit to God, and we can only uh, go by the testimonies of those people in the community. And uh, many of them have testified to us that they're grateful that we're there. We're there, so. So, food bank, you're assisting to send kids to college with a leap for Faith, and a lot of people love basketball. Yes. Um, is it open to young girls as well? Uh, yes, we, we have. One of the challenges that we have faced was securing a permanent location on a consistent basis, and that's our long-term goal. I would like to erect a community center with basketball courts and computer centers, uh, computer training and those things, just to cater to our youth because there's a lot of cuts that are taking place to after-school programs. Absolutely. And uh, I feel that's where the church is supposed to step in and make the difference. And among those challenges is, I'm sure, funding for even small maintenance, keeping the church afloat. What does it really take to run and maintain a church of that level? It takes a lot of faith in God. <laughs> and I see it in your face. <laughs> I saw it in your face. You know, I have to take a step back. This really could be a challenge. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of trusting God. The Bible says, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. It's not my church, it's his church. If it's my church, I have to take care of it. But because it's his, he takes care of it. It is my responsibility to live and to teach the people the ordinance of God. And by obeying him, he provides for us. And you said something that really touched me because you said, it's not my church, it's his church. Yes. But a lot of people, a lot of pastors, a lot of bishops make that mistake with, it's my church. Yes. And there shouldn't be a, a my, it should be ours, it should be we. Well, that's what I teach uh, New Creation. I teach them, this is not our, this is not my church, this is not my family, this is our church. First and foremost, it's the Lord's church. And then secondly, it's our church. And anything that you are a part of, that you believe in, you should support it and you should promote it. If you cannot support it and promote it, you don't need to be a part of it. And that's very true. Yeah. Have you ever gotten to that point where it got so overwhelming? I know you have a, a wife and a family and, uh, and support, but have you got to that moment at times where you just be, why am I doing this? I, I can say in 20 years of ministry and 13 years of pastoring, I probably came to that point maybe once or twice. I'm so grateful, I, I'm, I'm grateful to God that he changed my life, that my debt to him is to, at any cost, I must try my best to please him and to pay him back. Uh, there have been overwhelming moments in ministry, but those are the times you just gotta take step back, take a deep breath, and just look to God. The Bible said, I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help, and all my help comes from him. And I gotta trust him. I have to trust him. 
And when he helped you, when you decided all those years ago that you were going to stop your old life, yes. stop the streets, stop everything else, was there a particular moment that when you decided to do that where I'm going to, God, if you get me out of this situation, I will change my life? Uh, yes, there was. There was. Um, in 89, I was falsely accused of a crime that I didn't commit. And um, being falsely accused of this crime, I wound up being incarcerated for something I didn't do. And, uh, the, you know, this, this whole thing lingered a whole year. I was incarcerated a whole year on, for, for this particular crime. And, uh, you know, they tried to get me to, uh, to, to take a plea bargain, and I refused. I told them I didn't do it. I'm not going to accept any charges. And uh, I prayed, and exactly what you said. I said to God, if you get me out of this, you got me. And that's been 23 years ago. I walked out of that courtroom acquitted of all charges. And uh, there was nothing charged against me. And that was a turning point in my life. And that was God. It was God. Definitely God. We'll praise the Lord for that. Keep it right here, everybody. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. We'll be right back. Watching Beyond Focus TV, I'm Lydia Patel, and as we are continuing our interview here with our very special guest, Wesley Knight, Bishop Wesley Knight, we were just in the midst of talking about being incarcerated, how people could change their lives and, and turn to God, basically. And you were talking about young men who, this happens on a regular, actually. Sure, sure. There are a lot of young men who are incarcerated. Uh, one of the ongoing jokes about incarceration is that I'm, I didn't do it. But really and honestly, there are some people who are behind bars who did not do it. And without uh, proper representation, legal representation, or support of family, they wind up taking plea bargains and sentences just to get out of what they're in. Um, we need to really challenge that because it gives people another opportunity or a second chance if we can get them to understand that there's purpose for their lives and you don't have to stay on the path that you're on stay on the road that you're on but through god he gives you opportunity to open up doors then uh their lives can be a whole lot different absolutely i fully agree and i want to talk about youth yes. because you have a large uh youth base in your church roughly 80 yes. percent you were saying yes yes so let's talk about that well uh, the young people has been one of our my heartbeats of ministry um, we, um, we always had, we always had more young people than we had adults. Which is unusual yes. because in most churches, a lot of people, they say the challenge is trying to getting younger people involved and they want to have some more youth. You've had more of a youth congregation. Yes. We, uh, even when ministry started, we had young people who were attending church and their parents wasn't. And, uh, those young people were so excited that they would get out, they, they would go out and get their friends. Um, so we had, uh, we had uh, people of other religion who uh, changed to Christianity. Wow. We had young people who were in gangs. We had young girls who were prostituting. And now they're saved in the church. Many of them have gone on, uh, married now, and have their own families. Uh, but, but the Lord has been with us in that reaching our youth. That's great. And anything in particular that you do to promote to get the message out there, to get more youth in, in, into the church? Well, in a time that we're living, we really need to actually go back and look at the 80s. If we go back to the 80s to 90, there was a major transition in America. There was, uh, there were crack, there was an outbreak of Haron, BCW came into play, 
uh, the first AIDS case in 1981 was introduced, there was a major breakdown in the structure of family. And so the Bible said any child left to raise himself is a reproach to his parents. During that time, we had a lot of kids who yes. were left to raise themselves. And uh, from that, it's 23 to 33 years later, and we're still dealing with what happened in the 80s to 90. Um, a lot of those kids did not experience love. They didn't know what a family was like. They didn't know what it was like to be a part of a family. And that's the message that we really try to convey to the young people, that many of them don't know who their father is. But thank God you have someone who God has placed in your life to be a father figure. Many of them don't, didn't have their mothers present. But my wife is very instrumental in working in the women's department and working with our young women. And so uh, that's, the, that's the thing. We just try to love them, try to encourage them and let them know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I love it. And yeah. what projects? You know, we're summertime. We have so many different things. Music has always been one of the key things to reach a lot of people. And I know in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to uh, have that going on, a midnight concert. Actually, why don't you just give us some details on that? Yes, well, we have a fellowship in the city of 20 churches. It is the New York City Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries Leadership Alliance. And we have an annual conference uh, that takes place every year. This is our 13th year. And at the end of that conference, we have a youth explosion for our young people, which actually takes place at midnight. I think that is so cool <laughs> <laughs> for a church. And it's all gospel, reggae, um, there's hip hop, but yes. all with that gospel twist on it. Yes. Well, uh, we need to understand the Bible says every good and perfect gift come down from the Father. Many times we have rejected uh, the message of God because it didn't come in the package we thought it would come in. Paul says some preach out of pretension, some preach out of pretense, some preach out of love. He said, well, rather in pretense or in truth, the gospel is preached. We need to understand that however the message get out, we need to embrace it. And that's just how it is. And yes. speaking of something, we've got something in a beautiful little package <laughs> right here. I want you all to look at this at home. Bishop, why don't you tell us about this? Well, this is our newly released CD. It came out last year. Um, it is the Fellowship, the Alliance Choir, uh, Mass Choir. We did a, um, a CD, and uh, I am the executive producer of the CD. I wrote three songs on the project. Uh, I wish they would have let me sing on it. <laughs> so you got some talents, you know, on top of being in church, you actually get to write the music. And um, what were, talk about the three tracks that you actually wrote. Well, the three tracks that I actually wrote was written at a time in my life when one of the ones, when I had to step back and really just um, just seek the face of God. It, one of the tracks is entitled In Your Presence is where I want to stay. And uh, I was going through a transition, spiritual transitional period in my life. And uh, I began to write this song because I told God, you know, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. So no matter what's going on in your life, if you can just stay in his presence, he's like the installation for your problems. And uh, that was uh, uh, in your presence. There's a, another track that I wrote uh, entitled Rejoice in the Lord. Uh, and uh, the final track I wrote was uh, Keep on Keeping the Faith. And that's something that we have to do. We have to, no matter what happens, we have to keep our faith in God. Now, getting the, the opportunity to executive produce the CD, this is your first CD, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Do you see yourself wanting to get in more into music and promote music like this and make albums where it could reach people from anywhere in the world? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, actually, I'm already considering our second CD. Uh, I play percussions, I play drums, uh, early part of church. And so I, I love music. Music has the ability to make a, a tremendous impact. And uh, we're actually looking into uh, our second CD now, trying to bring the material together to get ready for that. Now we know a lot of people, they love being online, they love being able to download. Where, is this available on iTunes? How do we get some of the music on this CD? Uh, yes, it's lo you can uh, purchase it on CD Baby, Amazon.com, uh, and it's also on iTunes. 
All right, so make sure everybody do pick up a copy of this CD. If you haven't heard the music, you're interested in doing that, please go ahead and support because yes. I know a lot of work went into this and personally getting the chance to executive produce that, you know, it's, did it come out as your vision? Yes, it did. Uh, I must give credit to uh, Elder Antonio Black and MB Production. Uh, he did a wonderful job in uh, mixing and, and uh, arranging and uh, he did an awesome job, and I have to give him credit, him and his production team. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I definitely want to get to hear some of those. Yes. And before we wrap up, where can we get in contact, and how can we get in contact with you? Um, we can be reached at the New Creation Christian Church, which is located at 1534 Broadway in Brooklyn, New York. Our phone number is 718-573-9980. Also, we can be found on Facebook, uh, under New Creation Christian Church, or either Wesley V. Knight. Well, that's great. Any Thank final you. words, anything that you want to say to the people who are watching it, your Beyond Focus TV family, the floor is open to you. Well, I just want to thank God for being faithful, being faithful and uh, being grateful. I'm grateful for his faithfulness. I also thank my wife who worked very closely with me in ministry. She's here today and... Uh, my children for being understanding to understand what God have called me to do uh, I just want to say to someone we are living in an hour and time now whereas God intends for us to live a victorious life he never intends for us to be the victim and many of us are victims of circumstance but through Jesus Christ we can live and have the victory the Bible says thanks be unto God which gives us the victory through Christ Jesus and you can live a victorious life Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Bishop Wesley Knight, thank you so much for joining me here tonight on You're Beyond welcome. Focus TV. It was a lovely conversation. I really yes, enjoyed it, and I would love to have you back again, maybe for part two and, and follow up with you. Everyone, it is that time for me to go. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Once again, my special guest for the evening was Bishop Wesley V. Knight. I'm Lydia Patel. Have a great time, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV.